Good morning. Good day, everyone. Uh, today is a really special day because it's the 19th year anniversary of the group. Uh, we were founded right after the 9-11 tragedy. And as David said, Janelle was one of two recruiters that were with us at that first meeting. The initial focus of the group was to help those people that lost their jobs uh, and were displaced due to the tragedy. And then over the years, we've had so many things with economic and financial crises, and now even COVID, that has made it uh, necessary for the group to continue. We're a 100% pay it forward group. So many of the people that you see on the screen, we have a very nice blend of people that went through our program, have landed, and uh, come back as volunteers to help everyone uh, that is joining in, in helping them land their next opportunity. Uh, two uh, housekeeping things is number one, to join the group, you simply go to our main page at thebreakfastclubnj.com, which is our website, our homepage. You click on join the group. We're a Yahoo group. And all we ask is three things that you supply, your full name, your email address, and your phone. Again, that's your full name, your email address, and your phone. If we don't have those three things, we can't complete adding you to the group. So please make sure, you know, some people go in and they write these long dissertations. Great information, but if you don't have those three things, your full name, your email, and your phone, we can't let you in, and then we have to go back and forth via email till, till we get them. The other thing is we use meetup.com in order to advertise our um, speakers, our programs month over month, so everybody remembers when the date is. We keep the date very easy. It's usually the second Saturday of every month at the same time, 8 a.m., and uh, now it's with the same video conferencing setup but normally it was at the same physical location as well because we tried to make it easy for our members to remember and come. But the meetup is a great thing because on one side, it gives you a reminder of what the meeting date is uh, and what the, uh, who the speaker is going to be, what the topic is going to be, but it also gives you a great advantage because after the meeting, meetup sends you a uh, list of everybody that has RSVP to attend the meeting. And sometimes you remember a person's name. Sometimes you remember a person's face. This way you can match them up and follow up on, you know, something critical piece of information that that individual may have shared. We also have a Facebook group. We also have a hidden LinkedIn group. It's not uh, just published out on LinkedIn, but it's hidden. So as soon as you join the Breakfast Club NJ.com via the Yahoo group, Haresh Paswani, who is our moderator, sends you out a invite to join the LinkedIn group. Once you're in the LinkedIn group, you still have to connect to everybody else, uh, but you now can see them and see who had joined. It's very critical during uh, a job search to grow your network. So here's thousands of contacts that you could share. And then a lot of those individuals have as many as 30,000 connections. So you can see how quickly within a nice condensed consolidated area, such as the greater New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia area, uh, you can grow your network quite substantially very fast. And that will help when you find an unknown opportunity and want to convert it to a known opportunity. Also, once you're a member of the Breakfast Club, you can send emails to the entire group, uh, of which we have over 9,000 members. Uh, 800 of those are sitting C-level executives. But it has to be specific to job search or career management. We suggest that if you're in transition, you take your elevator pitch, reduce it into a message, and then send it out to everybody. Let everybody know about you. Know the value proposition you have. 
you know, what type of position you're looking for. There are many, many hiring managers among our members, and they would be glad to give a leg up and help out one of our members that are in transition. The other thing is when you're searching for information on different companies that you may be considering targeting, simply put a message out there. Hi, this is so-and-so. I'm looking for information on XYZ company. And that is also a great way to find companies and, and uh, interests on companies that you're targeting. So again, those boards should be lighting up. We should be seeing messages all day long. Uh, please use them. They're all there. All of this was built free of charge just to help out the members who are in transition. So again, thank you for being a special part of our 19th anniversary. I'm very glad to have one of our members from that meeting here today to present. And with that, I'll turn it over to Jerry Payton. Uh, Jerry and David are two volunteers that run our presentation committee and set up all of our meetings for the year, our presenters, our topics. So they do an excellent job at making sure that we have good speakers on topics that are highly relevant. Thank you, everyone, and I hope you have a great month ahead. And also, we look forward to hearing a lot of landings at our next meeting. Thank you. Thank you so much, Frank. Um, good morning, everyone. I'd like to introduce today an excellent speaker who really understands this marketplace. And I know a lot of us uh, working for a while and all of a sudden it hits and now we're in the market and we say, now we have to become experts on it. Well, what's the best way to become an expert? by talking to an expert and asking questions of an expert. Well, we have an expert today on that. So now I'll introduce her. Uh, Janelle Rosino, President and CEO of Rosino Associates Inc., discovers the right talent for the right companies at the right time. She is passionate about bringing big ideas to life, motivating and empowering candidates, and partnering with companies to make great things happen. As a boutique firm, and premier search organization, Rosino Associates Inc. brings 30 years of experience, or say, uh, nearly 30 years of experience in corporate recruiting and management, specializing in C-level, executive level, and mid-level placement for the Fortune Global 2000 marketplace. Janelle is a regular speaker at many corporate outplacement firms and networking groups. She's also the founder of the Hillsdale Network Career Resource Ministry in Hillsdale, New Jersey. I'd like to introduce Janelle. Good morning. Thank you, Jerry. I really appreciate that. That was very, very nice. Um, Dave and Frank, thank you so much for having me here this morning. And look, to be perfectly honest, I love an audience, especially with these celebrities. And, and actually, we have a few of them uh, this morning. But I wanted to thank you for spending a Saturday morning uh, at eight o'clock, you know, to get up and listen uh, to some, you know, points about salary negotiation because, you know, that damn question, you know, what are your salary requirements? I wish they would just erase those words. Um, so thank you so much for coming and, you know, having a coffee with me and, you know, talking a little bit about, you know, what's happening out there uh, in terms of salaries. And uh, I know that it could get confusing because I hear a lot of stuff out there that I consider to be myths. Um, because I know what happens in this office. I know what happens with my client base. And I know what happens with you when you come to me and ask, you know, the questions about salary. What should I do? Should I look at a job like this? Should I take a, a hit in salary? Uh, it's, you know, I'd like to get into a big company. But I know if I make a pivot into another area, I might have to take a lower salary. And these are all the things, you know, these are all the confusing things that are happening out there. And I, I listen to the gamut of uh, confusion, questions, and then try to answer you the best way I can uh, based on what I know and learn every single day by being in the search business because I do talk to clients all the time. Uh, some of you that know me know that, you know, I'm not shooting from the hip. And when clients, you know, give me a salary to work on with a job description, if that salary sounds like it was back in the 1960s, I'm gonna tell them. 
And I feel that, you know, current salaries today uh, should be on the way up, not on the way down. And you might be saying, yeah, but, well, you're right. A lot of people out there are saying, well, you know, they're asking me to take a shot in salary because, you know, I'm remote, I'm home, uh, I'm not doing the commute. But what does that have to do with your knowledge? What does that have to do with your value? What does that have to do with the career history that you have worked so hard for and to get to a level in salary that should be the right salary? Why should companies tell us and tell you what you should be making and why they're going to cut a salary? And this is what I get very juiced up about because just because we're home, just because we're remote, just because, you know, this, we're in the middle of this world event, did you dump $20,000 worth of brain matter out of your head? The answer is no. And that's why your value has to be equal to or greater than what you're currently earning. Now, if you tell me that you were, you were an IT executive and want to be a dancer, that's a whole different story. All I'm trying to say is there's no reason in this marketplace, especially today, to take a hit and pay. So let's go through a couple of let's go through a couple of the points uh, that I really wanted to make today. Um, you got a choice: take it or leave it. Right? You get a salary. You could take it or leave it. You can negotiate it. You have to determine your value. If you were making 100 or 200 and you want to stay at that level, your experience talks to that salary. And by the way, since we all started working in our careers, the reason why we went up in salary is because of our knowledge base, right? Companies pay us because of the knowledge and experience we have. And that's how we elevated through our careers to get to the salary we are at. That's called experience and work history. You can decide to disclose your salary or not. And if you decide to say, my salary, look, my last day's salary was 100 and I'm looking for a bump, then stop talking. Just stop talking and listen to what the interviewer has to say. Or, and that could be HR, it could be, you know, talent, it could be a recruiter, it could be a, a company. And last but not least, leave nothing on the table. You know, I have a lot of uh, candidates, you know, are considering making a move. Their bonuses uh, in their in the company they're in now are paid out typically, you know, in December or in some cases, March. Do not leave that bonus on the table um, to, and walk away from it because the company is either being bought out, uh, laying you off, whatever. If there's a bonus there, you want it. And companies typically today, for the right company, for the right candidate, will pay that bonus for you to come on board earlier than anticipated. So those are just a couple of things I wanted to bring out uh, because you worked this hard all this time to look at salaries and bonuses, stock options, vacation. Anybody here taking two weeks vacation? I mean, I, I don't know if you're interested in two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, but I think a lot of you are at the level, all right, four weeks, Nancy, I think there's a lot of people out there who are very used to, you know, taking a lot of vacation. So you have to take a lot of this, you know, into consideration and get packages that make sense. Know your number. Knowing your number about what you want. Um, you've probably done, you know, um, a, what I call a Ben Franklin. You know, what do I need? What do I want? what you need to survive every day, you know, in your base salary is something that 
you know, only you know alone. And what you need, sometimes people come to me and say, Janelle, I need X amount of dollars. Well, all right, that's fine. But what do you want? What number do you want? Sometimes that number is $20,000 more. Sometimes it's 30. Sometimes it's 10. That would be the number that's here. And that's the number you have to stick to. In most cases, companies will give you that or more. And not because I say it, but because it's, it happens in nine, 99 and 9 tenths percent of all candidates that I've seen ask for more money and get that or more. The reason you're decisive about your decision making. When you give a range of a salary to a prospective employer like HR or a hiring manager, immediately that individual says, well, is that how they're gonna work? Is that the kind of decision making that's going to happen in the company? I'll go from here to here. Or, well, I could do this, but I could do this too. Well, aren't you decisive in your decision making when you're at work? You know your stuff. You know what's right. You know what's wrong. You know how to perform and you're not shaky about it. You're confident about it. And that's the way you have to approach the salary. Be confident about what you want. You know, let's talk about confidence for a minute. You know, confidence plays a big role in just about everything. You know, before I get on to the, to, uh, before I get on to Dave's network group, you know, I get nervous. You know, I go, oh my God, am I going to do all right this morning? Um, uh, you know, will there be, uh, you know, it doesn't matter for me whether there's one or a hundred people, but I get nervous. And that shakes my confidence a little bit because I want to do a good job. Well, five minutes into this broadcast this morning, I knew exactly how I was going to approach this. And that's the way you need to think about your salary. You need to know how to approach that and deliver that message, right? It confidently and saying, well, you know, I know what my value is. And I know how I perform. I know I've got gravitas. I know I've got a little swag. You have to approach that salary with that kind of confidence. You know, we fear a lot about, well, yeah, but Janelle, I know, but what if I, you know, bump myself out of the job because of the salary? You know, I could, I could walk myself right out of it. Well, if that's the case, then it wasn't the right level or it wasn't the right job. You know, there are a lot of uh, positions out there that look good to us. Well, I could do this, I could do this, I could do this, I could do this. Well, we shoot in a lot of directions. But if you target this job search to the level equal to or elevate, and I always say elevate because you don't want to be bored in the job that you're going to take. So if it's the right level, you will never have a problem with salary, ever. Because you've all been in the position of hiring, I'm sure at one point in your life, in your jobs, and you know what those salary levels are. You know, we forget, you know, where we were in those uh, companies when we had the ability to hire. And you know that there's negotiation. You know that there are bands, you know, for this level, this level, this level. And if it's the right level, you should never have a problem with salary. But unfortunately today, um, we need to, all of us, you know, need to find a home. We need to provide for our families. We need, we're all in unique situations and we all have to do what we have to do. We've all been there, me included. So I have a lot of empathy for people who need to take positions that may be a little less than what they're uh, what they would like. But in this job search where we are 
here today, I think you can all attest to the fact that you've, you know, you're looking for that right opportunity at the right level. And by the way, there's so many people in the group that can help you get there. You know, you've got network leaders, you've got people who run network groups, you've got people who are hired, you've got people who are buddies. You know, I hear a lot about this buddy system. You've got me as a recruiter and other recruiters out there that you trust. And you've got people who have been in the workplace for a very long time. Use them. All right, so Dave, any questions yet? So one is, you mentioned the difference between what you need and what you want, but what about the context of market value? All right, so part of the process, um, uh, market value, you know, today, depending upon what the position is or what you're doing, uh, as an example, I will tell you that a CFO today will go anywhere from two to 275 with no issues. That's a market, right? The sweet spot in there is 225, 250. That's a chief financial officer. I don't care what industry, I don't care where you are, I don't care you know, what side of the country you're on. But if you're a CFO, those are your numbers. So pick one. And by the way, there's always ways to find out what the salary is in the position. You know, not just me, but there's a lot of companies out there that provide, and I don't mean salary.com and, you know, that crap. I mean companies out there who will tell you what salary levels are. And I can tell you right away that I've seen a few that put these uh, C-level uh, ranges way up there, mid-level. You know, you look for a controller or you look for, uh, how about a project How about a project manager? There is no one that should be taking less as a project manager today under 140. It's 140 and up. And depending upon your skill set, you know, you can elevate that salary pretty quick. And by the way, um, if I if I say a swear word now and again, Dave, don't be upset with me. But, you know, I know there are consultants out there, you know, we're trying to get a lot of, a lot of people into jobs at an hourly rate that is embarrassing. I've seen it, I've heard it, I don't like it. And you shouldn't like it either. So if you're a project manager and you're 140 and above, keep it that way. You got an hourly rate, make sure it's at an annual salary that you want. The market calls for it, Dave. The market calls for big numbers, not little numbers. And they all want you to believe that companies are shaving their salaries. And that's not the case. The reason why I'm still here after 30 years, through, through all of this, uh, these world events that we, uh, that we go through, is because understanding what people need, what companies want, and why we give the best candidates, why we present people like you and Adrian and Nancy and so many other great people is because it's the level, it's the level of expertise. So if you're great, you'll get the dollars. Does that answer the question? I believe so. And remember, folks, okay. put your questions in chat. Just type them. And uh, if you remember, please put the word question in front of it just so we can see them a bit easier. We're getting some other lots of comment activity. We don't want to miss your question. The word question will help it stand out. Yep. All right. So I'm just look, looking now. Nothing else has come through. So All right. have at it, and I will keep my eye on the chat. All right. So now you have this great interview coming up and you know how do you wow them right getting the job means wowing that individual and that also does play in the level of you know salary that will come out of all of this do they like you you know do you all feel that you're a likable person you know you all feel you're likable i mean i think you are 
Nancy, if I were a hiring manager, I would hire you in three seconds because that's all you do is smile. <laughs> but do they like you? People will fight for you if they like you in terms of moving you along. Good personality, a great attitude, right? We all have to have a really good attitude about what we're looking to attain. Attainment is finding that job that makes us feel whole again. And you need to have a good attitude about that. Companies also have to believe you're worth the offer you want. Now, I got to believe that you're all experts in what you do and where you come from. Explain to them why the salary you want is justified the reasons why you deserve more and the reasons why you deserve more than the next person. You know, I never worry about sending in a candidate to one of my companies. Um, I don't care if you line them up 10 at a time out the door to an interview. I never worry about my candidate because I know that I presented you the best candidate possible in a lineup of I don't care how many people, and you're prepared. I know what your value is. You know what your value is. You know what you're worth. And that confidence comes up, it bubbles up right away when you get into an interview. But you've got to believe that. That's where the attitude comes into play, that little swag, that little gravitas that you have inside. Let it come out. It's okay. You're great at what you do. Make it clear that you can make it um, make it clear to the company that can get you. Uh, no one wants to expend political or social capital to get approval for an improved salary if they believe you'll turn it down. You know, we never think about this because we want that job you know we want it i need that job i want that job um it's a great company for me uh but you've got to let the company know don't be afraid to let them know that yes i'm interviewing because sometimes that question comes out um are you interviewing anywhere else um does anybody hesitate on that question even though you're interviewing because if you are you know, don't hesitate anymore. Yes, I am interviewing, but XYZ companies at the top of my list. And already I love the environment. I could see myself here. You know, it's okay to say things like that. Let them know you're interested. Um, I'm gonna tell a story. Is that okay, Dave? Yep, and we have a question also. Okay, good. How about the question? Okay. This is from John. What is your thought on providing your current comp to a recruiter during an interview to gauge if their comp package is going to be a fit? To a recruiter? That's the question, yep. Oh, all right. So the recruiter should be telling you what the salary is. You know, it's that simple. They're talking to you about a job? They should tell you what the salary is. If is they hesitate. Is it different between the internal and the external recruiter? Maybe that's the question. Oh, internal. All right. Internal recruiter is different. All right. So, uh, again, for many of you who know me, the salary question, that damn question comes out. What are your salary expectations? Or what are you looking for salary wise? or what it was your salary history, however it comes out. You have two ways to answer this question and forget about dodging it because you don't want to dodge it. You All you do is prolong the pain and I don't want you to prolong the pain. Just rip it off. You've got two ways to answer this. I would be very happy to talk to you about my salary expectations. Would you please tell me what the, what the position is budgeted for. And use the word budget. Don't say range. Don't use fancy words. Ask the question, what is the position budgeted for? 
And that way, they've got to give you something. You know, it's the stupidest thing I've ever heard of, this salary question, you know, your compensation requirements and all that. It's a stupid question. But given the state of today, you've got to answer it. Or number two answer, well, I was making 100. I'm looking for a bump. And you could say it just as plain as day, but stop talking. That's an internal recruiter or an internal HR person. If you're talking to a person like me, and I typically wait for you to tell me a little bit about your salary, but if you don't, you know, I'll come over and I'll be on the phone or, you'll, I'll, or if you're in my office, do you want to talk to me about salary? You know, that's my question to you. Do you want to talk to me about any salary? Um, do you want to talk to me about salary? Uh, if not, no problem. I can tell you that the salary at this job um, is at 160. Does that fit your requirements? You know, does that fit into your scheme? You know, the pie in the sky, or, you know, if it were a perfect world, before you went into an interview, the HR person or the hiring manager whoever you're talking with, you know, should sit there and say, um, uh, Jerry, listen, thanks for coming today. I appreciate your time. Uh, before we get started, let me just go over a couple of a couple of things so that we're on the same page. One, there's some travel in the job. Are you okay with that? 20, 25%. Number two, the salary range on this job is low end X, mid-range and high top do any of those salaries fit your fit your uh expectation you say yes or no and our our we are remote at the moment but we will be coming back uh probably sometime in early 2021 that's the way an interview should start unfortunately it doesn't always start that way but that would be in a perfect world. So you've got to draw that out as best as you can. You know, um, I know a lot of talent people uh, in, in uh, talent acquisition, you know, try to dodge you, but you've got to, you've got to drive that steering wheel and try to find out what that salary is. And then you can see either shut up, stop talking, or say, I'm sorry, but those requirements do not fit my um, do not fit my salary history. And don't be afraid to say it. So we got questions are now pouring in, which is nice. Steve is asking, I've heard that some states like New York and New Jersey have certain laws restricting related to HR asking past salary history. Can you please update the, us on this and how it might relate to those seeking positions in New Jersey? They, they are not allowed to ask you your salary history or your last salary, what were you making? Are not allowed to ask the question. It's against the law. And I know that there are people that break the law. And if that is the case, I would say to them, um, I would like to talk, I could talk to you about my salary compensation requirements. What is the position budgeted for? I mean, or you could just be, you know, like, you know, that's against the law to ask the question. <laughs> that's if you don't like the company. But in New Jersey, they're not allowed to ask the question. Yeah, the law actually went into effect for private companies in New Jersey at the beginning of this year. Uh, before that, uh, public organizations couldn't. New York City is separate from New York State. It's illegal in both uh, entities. New York City, it's been since about 2017. I don't remember when New York State enacted the law. I don't know other states. So um, um, I think that but, was but, almost two years, Dave. Oh, okay. But then, you know, Lisa has a follow-up question along these lines. How do you deal with the ATS systems that won't let you get past go without filling out a salary box? Oh my God, those ATS systems, are we still on there? <laughs> Come on, people, get off the ATS systems. You know, 
I am amazed that, and I'm just going to address that for a second. You know, the applicant tracking systems in these companies are broken. They're all broken. I don't care how many seminars you go to that tell you how to get around the ATS system, how to get through the ATS system. I don't care how many you go to. No, does anybody tell you that the ATS systems are broken? I hear that every day inside companies. And I ask HR, do you take the resumes? Do you look at the resumes? Why does the algorithm blow out a candidate that is a perfect fit? You know why? Because you're never seen. When you see the number of applicants, you know, that apply to the job, you do know that maybe one or two of the people out of 300 that applied maybe fit the job. But they never get down to the ones that actually applied that might be good. So your resume may not ever be seen. And I don't care how many network groups, how many people pop up, how to get around the algorithms, the AI. I don't care what your resume looks like format wise. You gotta understand that these resumes are seen almost never. And how do you get into the companies? You go directly to an individual. And there's an easy way to do that. And that's on another seminar. But anyway, so right. I know that you I know you have to jump into the ATS. I, I know that because there could be something out there that you absolutely love. But go find the person first. Find a person first. I got off on a tangent, Dave. I apologize. No, no, that's fine. And there was another similar question, which you answered. But here's one. On phone interviews prior to continuing to the in-person interview, they say this position only pays such and such. And if I don't accept, can't I con can I continue with the interview process? Is this acceptable? Well, that, again, you know, that's up to you. Do you want to waste your time? You know, if you feel that the salary is unacceptable. And by the way, I did not answer, um, you, know, the, you know, that little box that says, what's your salary uh, compensation in the ATS system? I apologize. Um, just put the salary you want. Don't worry about whether you feel you'll knock yourself out of the running. If the salary, if the level of the position is correct, you won't bump yourself out. So in that little box, put your salary that you want or put the salary that you were earning before you started looking. So whoever, uh, I apologize for not answering that directly, but I just get so fired up about the ATS systems. Okay, let's see. Um, if you have a set number in mind for salary, would or should this be adjusted based on geographical area you're targeting? For example, New York City salaries are normally higher from what I see on job boards. So should my number remain the same if targeting jobs in New Jersey versus New York City? Well, you know, again, if you have the number in mind that you want, it should be consistent, you know, pretty much across the board. Uh, New York, if you're commuting into New York, um, I always say, you know, salaries definitely are higher uh, because you have a commute situation uh, once we all go back. Uh, and even if we don't have a commute situation, salaries would be higher. And in some cases, you know, industry, financial services, uh, fintech, hedge funds, companies like that would be a little higher. So that's why I say pick the number you want not the number that you need in Jersey or New York. So I was gonna tell a quick story. Um, and, and this is, this actually happened yesterday. So real world, real life happened yesterday. I got a referral in uh, from somebody who I placed out of a company into a new firm. 
a couple months ago. She was very excited because she was referred in to me and we had a great conversation. This person um, was making uh, $57,000 as a base salary, a lightweight, four years worth of experience. And she was all, you know, vim and vigor, very excited. You know, oh my God, I'm going to go to Amazon. And I said, all right. And tell me a little bit about the job. And she did. And it's in the warehouse. And it's some sort of supervisory position. And it is an hourly rate, which I can't believe. And it is, um, it was lower than what she was currently earning. Now, I don't care if you're making 57, 570, or somewhere in between. This story is very important. So I said, all right, so hold on a minute. Um, you're at 57, you're four years worth of experience. Amazon wants to pay you a lower salary than what you're currently earning. And I said, right to her, how does that make any sense? I mean, you're at a point in your career where you're starting to elevate like everyone else, and you're gonna take a shot at the hip in salary? Well, it's a high tech company, you know, they're a big company, they're a great company, they're the, oh really? Well, how about the environment? When we look at companies, we've got to look at the environment, right? How many of you right now really wanna work in a warehouse? And by the way, she had an MBA, great school, came out of a superb management consulting firm, and Amazon was going to pay her with the balls to give her a, a, a $5,000 pay cut. Are you kidding me? I was appalled. So I said, wait, so are you the type of person who wants to work in a warehouse? It's the environment that you should be looking for, not the company. You know, do you know what the environment is like? So all of a sudden, you know, she started, she was started to change her tune a little bit. And then we got into value, why Amazon would devalue what she was currently earning, what would make them do that? And why? Because they're Amazon? Why? Why? Because it's the NFL? Why? Because it's the MLB and you should be thrilled to work with us. How about that they should be thrilled to hire you? And that's what I mean when I say the confidence, the swag, a little gravitas. Well, by the end of that conversation, I had introduced her to two companies, two very high level people, um, one in FinTech and one in um, actually it was uh, one is a fintech company, which she loved, and the other was in manufacturing, in a manufacturing company. So she left that conversation feeling like, wow, I've been listening to some garbage out there that's not really true. And by the way, the recruiters, you know, all tell her that, you know, you're going to have to take a cotton pay. At four years worth of experience, what balls that is. All I'm trying to say is there's no need to take a cut in your paycheck if the environment is correct and if the level is correct. So keep that in mind. Okay, right, thank you. Yeah, Don has a question. I've had some recruiters ask or insist, what is my salary expectation or rate before they give me the full job description of sending it in. Is this allowed? Well, again, you have you have the ability to write back to them or say to them, I would be very happy to talk to you about my expectations. Please tell me what the position is budgeted for. I mean, that's a conversation that has to happen. 
you know, I know that when you get up to dancing with the wolves, that sometimes it's hard to get that out, but you got to do it. You've got to ask the question, what is the position budgeted for? And I do know candidates, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just saying, I think the distinction is it's not illegal to ask what is your salary expectation, but what you're talking about is managing this negotiation process. Well, yes, Dave, it's not illegal, but it's the it's the same question. You know, they get around this by asking that question. So that's why I say, if your expectation is here, then say it. And tell them what the expectation is. Don't worry about whether you knock yourself out of the running. If the level is correct, you'll be fine. This is Don. I just, um, I guess I just want to add to that or get a little more clarification on it. Some of the jobs are um, as contractors, and I've not contracted before. So in terms of rates, for me, I guess there are some questions about what benefits are provided, because the rate would differ then if I'm being hired by a company to be contracted out, um, or if I was looked at as my own company, like Corp to Corp or 1099. So the rate for me would vary depending on that. Um, you're, tell me your first name again. Don. Don. I, I, yeah, Dave just oh, Dave. was talking about my question. Yeah, Don, thank you. All right, so I'm sure you've done the calculation. Uh, rate-wise or hourly rate-wise, what you would need as an annual salary, like if you were taking a full-time job. You would already know what that salary annually would be. So just do the reverse. Calculate what that number should be when you're looking for a new opportunity in consulting. And either adjust up or down, depending upon it's a, whether it's a W-2 or a corp to corp and whether they provide benefits or not. So, you know, do that little formula. What would be my annual salary? What's the hourly rate I need, you know, to make it work? And on a W-2, 1099, and figuring in benefits. And don't move off that annual number. Because okay, that's so a number. I, yeah, so Wait, I think then it's kind of like what exactly would benefits cost me to then right. factor in the whole number. That is correct. And I would factor in the benefits. Yeah. You know, because your because your argument or your debate with them negotiation is, well, wait, I have to pay for my own benefits. And I'm I am going to figure that number into the hourly rate, which is fair. You know, consultants are notorious for, you know, taking the lion's share of the hourly rate and giving you twenty dollars an hour. Don't let that happen. In addition to Don, one or two people asked similar questions. You have to factor in cost of benefits, and you said yes. I want to let you know that I've also just posted a link. It's uh, you'll get some. It's from Founder.com. You'll get some guidance on how to charge for your service. Uh, in a okay. nutshell, you do have to find out what market rate is, similar to what uh, Janelle talked about before. So go look in chat. There's a link there. Uh, to get you a little bit of guidance on uh, how to charge as a consultant. Uh, let's see, I want to make sure I don't miss any other questions. I thought I saw one. Applicant tracking. Can you talk a little bit more? This is from Mark. Can you talk a little bit more about finding an individual in a target organization and avoiding the ATS? Of course. Um, you know, we get, uh, when I have candidates in or when we're talking on the phone, uh, and they know that there's, and they find out there's another way to get around all of that. It's about pinpointing the person that you would normally, 
uh, report to in your organization. So for example, let's say a you were a director and you were reporting to a VP uh, in that role. Um, chances are, if you're looking for a similar role, it would be a VP or maybe a senior director level. And you've got to go looking for that person who would be hiring in the role that you would be looking at. If you find, and all you have to do is pop it into Google, you know, who is the senior director? Who is the VP for XYZ division at whatever company? I mean, I do it all day long and it comes up right away. And then whether they are in the office or not, it doesn't matter. You can always send a message to them via LinkedIn but it's all in the delivery of that message as to whether they will get back to you or not. Because you have to make that delivery very compelling. But go straight to the person. And you, I'm sure, already exhausted the people that you know that might be connected to that individual. And if you're not, then call me. <laughs> I'll Gina find the person. Yeah. Gina asked, how can you find out what the environment is like prior to working there besides doing your research? Well, you know, you can always ask uh, people that work there or, you know, pop a note out to somebody, you know, notice that you were, you know, you're currently at XYZ company. Uh, I am interviewing with the firm. Um, can we have a 15 minute conversation? Would love to understand what you do. And there, that way you can glean. And by the way, Dave, I know sometimes it may sound a little, you know, I don't know this person. Well, that's okay. Remember, we're all in the same situation. If you're reaching out to someone to find out what the environment is like, not the culture, the environment, it's okay to touch people and ask them. You know, it's good when we know somebody in the firm that way we can get kind of like a sense but don't be afraid to reach out to people it's okay you know they're welcome it they'll they'll probably welcome it actually wow you're asking me for advice wow does that help or does that help gina okay so um uh, lisa at oops where did it Oh, Gina said, thank you. Great. Uh, so Lisa's sure. asking, what do you mean by environment being different from culture? Well, okay, good question. We are, you know, I've, we, we've all asked the question, so can you tell me what the culture is like? Is that really the question you want to ask? We don't know what the culture is of any organization. I mean, think about it. Is it a diverse culture? Every company today is diverse, right? And with today's world events, you see more and more things pop up about diversity. So I would think at this point in time in life, we can all agree that the cultures of companies are diverse so whatever whatever they're selling whatever they're making whatever financial institution you're going to i would believe that the culture would be diverse because that's the question we're asking environment is about where you're going to work whether it be in accounting whether it be in it whether it be in uh, tax or um, uh, in messaging or project management. Any one of those areas is an environment. What is the environment like? You know, if you go to a small company, um, the environment, uh, it's not about culture, it's about environment in a small company. You know, is the owner of the company a lunatic? Is he smacked out of his head? because we know companies like that, or is the company very well positioned in a marketplace, you know, with good management style and treats their people
people very well. And we have seen both. That is an environment. But in a large company, you've got to think about what that environment is like in accounting, in finance, in IT. Is the CIO, you know, um, does he blow up? She blow up every day? And I know that we all know people who treat their departments bad, and we know the ones that treat them well. We've all been there. So that's what I mean by environment versus culture. Don't Perfect. ask that question anymore. <laughs> you know, meaning, don't ask the question, can you tell me what the culture is? Because we all know what the cultures are today. It's a different question you have to ask. Adele has a question. So what is the delivery message? I find something where we have a connection or similar experience. <laughs> Say I am interested in learning more about the job and I ask for a five minute call from them or someone on their team. How can I improve the ask? Um, it's the way you write the message. You know, what? why would I want to talk to you? Um, why would you, Adele, why would you want to talk to you? What makes you so exciting? What makes you get people to speak with you? Uh, is it in the first few notes, you know, the first few um, words of the note? You know, I'm excited about the prospect of XYZ Company, and here's why. I am, um, saw you on LinkedIn. There's a great position. I would love to talk to you for 12 minutes to get your thoughts. You know, you can massage or wordsmith a note to someone to deliver the right message. You know, we don't need to send a canned phrase. We use what we have about ourselves. Look, I'm a happy person. Anybody that doesn't want to talk to me, well, that's their problem. But I will tell you that if you approach in a very enthusiastic and very um, enjoyable way, right? Likeable people will hire likable people. Like people will hire likable people. Then that's how the message is going to come across. Very sincere, very authentic. It's not canned. And put yourself in the note. That's how you get responses. Does that help a little bit? Well, while we get that response, here's one from Marla. How do you combat nerves when dealing with a salary negotiation at a place where you currently are employed? Okay, wait, 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 say that all over, Dave. So how do you combat nerves when dealing with a salary no negotiation at a place where you are currently employed? So you want to raise, right? I'm thinking that you're looking for, you know, you're talking about a raise or, or an increase in salary percentage wise, and you're having the conversation with a hiring manager. I'm thinking that's what that is. I guess so. Yeah. Let's proceed that way. All right. Okay, what's to be nervous about? If your performance has been good, if you've enjoyed the company, um, if you haven't had any brawls in the middle of the room, uh, if, if, you have, if you've been doing what you need to be doing and there's you know, productiveness and you're doing all the right things, no sense of being nervous. What are we nervous about? We're nervous because somebody's gonna take our job? I don't think so. Don't be, there's no, either that or have a glass of wine before the, no. <laughs> be very careful with that. Right, no, don't have, don't have a glass of wine before the negotiation. Um, if you're nervous, you know, under, remember, confidence comes out when you're confident, when you're, e you know, at ease, authentic, originality. You know, you've been doing a great job. Let them know it. And don't worry about what will come out at the other end. Your performance is good. You deserve a raise. Thank you very much. I'm with a big smile. 
And Marla has a follow-up question to her question. If you work in a job where there is no clear metric of success, such as sales, et cetera, what are some other ways to prove your worth? Well, um, I'm thinking that the, uh, that the environment that you're in is uh, not a revenue producing area like a sales, I think Dave mentioned, and you wanna prove your worth, start injecting yourself you know, in some of uh, some of the some maybe another project, or coming up with innovative original ideas uh, to change something, or maybe um, try to develop um, could be a procedure, uh, could be a community gathering, could be a, a town hall meeting. You can get original and inject yourself coming up with some creative and innovative ideas. And when you are open to helping others, that's when your performance starts to, you know, really shine. You know, Dave, I did want to say one more thing about this negotiation. You know, HR builds a negotiation piece into every salary budget that there is in every job every job so if somebody comes at you with a number always know that you can go to the well one time because they build a negotiation piece into that salary and know that they have it and that's not me saying it that's hr saying it so keep that in mind you know we can always all of us can go to the well one time when were made an offer. Um, if I if I get an offer from a from a company, and the candidate is kind of like, well, Janelle, I know we talked about the salary and the range that I'm in is good, but I like a little more. Well, all right, not a problem. So we start asking the questions. All right, why do we need that increase? And typically, my delivery is spot on. So the salary goes up a little bit because I know I can go to the well one time, you know, with all the questions and all the requests, actually. In most companies, they will not refuse you. Um, you can have a salary, uh, I'd like more salary, more vacation. What about the benefits, 401? Um, is there a reimbursement for travel? All of those questions will come out. But presenting them all at once and then validating each one, you'll get your raise. Thank you. Um, John has a question. Is Glassdoor a good place to find out about a company's culture? You can read the comments, correct? I think that's where what Glassdoor is all about. You know, and you've got all kinds of comments on there uh, from I love this company, I love my boss, I hate this person, <laughs> they don't give me a big salary, um, they make me work 18 hours a day, but I love my free lunch. Is that where, I'm, where we're going with Glassdoor? Would that be pretty? Yeah, let's assume so. Yeah, it's, it's a mixed right. bag, you're right. Spot on. Well, if you've got a whole litany and list of bad reports, you know, coming out of Glassdoor, out of XYZ company, you know, I know for people that use that as gospel. And if they talk about how bad it is, you know, again, if you have a good feeling for the firm, go and find a person to talk to. And if they tell you it's really bad, ask them why they're still there. Ask them why they're still there. Okay. Joe has a question. What is viewed as high turnover at a company? And is it a warning sign? Uh, it could be. You know, I, I, I reflect on a company that was doing extraordinarily well. Uh, I was in front of them face to face. 
and they were letting me know that the company was uh, at a 16% turnover rate after like three to six to nine months. And the reason it was so high is because the talent acquisition department didn't know how to hire. So they were bringing in people as a startup for of a three-year startup and they were bringing people in but the people that were being hired absolutely did not do the job so in that case you had a problem with the hiring environment and that's why the turnover was so high now here we are uh two years later and they've now put some controls in place uh, and some people who know what the hell they're doing. And things have calmed down a little bit. But, you know, I, if that's a, but I consider that to be an alert. You know, think about that if the turnover is very high. And find out why if you can. Thank you. Nancy has a question. Do small companies that may not have an HR department also build in room for negotiation? They do. They do, because Nancy, let's be honest. If somebody's decided that this is what the price is, it's either gonna be um, absolute, I can't pay a penny more because my budget doesn't approve it and they have constraints uh, or a salary uh, cap, um, then that would tell me that they just don't have the budget for you. You know, when we look for jobs, we need to look for companies that can afford us, right? So when you look at small, smaller firms, if that's your love, if that's where you want to be, if that's where you want to grow, then you've got to make a couple concessions then about that salary, if that's the highest they can go. Ask them, talk about sign-on, talk about start dates, um, ask them where they're flexible. Ask them where their bonus, you know, do they have a bonus? Can I have more vacation? Um, what about the job title? You know, I'd like to be, can we, can we elevate the job title? You help solve their problem, right? By, by being flexible in some of these other areas. That's all. Solve the problem for them. Okay, we have questions are pouring in. Thank you. You're so generous about this now, uh, Janelle. Let's oh, my see. Pleasure. Mariola, uh, regarding making that connection with a person working at a company that you were interested in, for whatever reason, environment, hiring process, et cetera, that person does not respond. Do you reach out again? Definitely reach out again if you can. You know, or find another find another way. Um, to reach that individual or a similar individual. We're all connected somewhere. Um, I reached out to, um, I've been going after this one client for several months. Have not been, I was unable to knock on the, on the right door. I wasn't getting any response. I wasn't getting this. I wasn't getting that. But I, I have a feeling for this firm. And when I have a feeling for a company, my drive is relentless. And I wanted to get in because I know I could help them. It was last week, I found a person in a sister company, which I didn't know they had, um, who knew the firm very well because it's a sister company and immediately put me in touch with the right person uh, in the right department. And the contract came over uh, on Thursday. Do not feel that if somebody doesn't respond to you, that it's over. Because doing a little research will produce good results. That research is key. And try, try to reach out again. Helpful. Okay. Okay, so um, Eileen is asking, and this may have been in your prior question, 
answer, which I could have missed while reading the other questions. How do you find out what is the turnover rate? How do you find out what is the turnover rate? Well, right. so earlier it was this turnover rate, you know, a uh, red flag. So Eileen is asking, how do you find out? Well, in mo again, in most companies, uh, it, it would be a depart, you know, it would probably be more of a, in a, in a large firm, it would definitely be more in the departments rather than the company as a whole. I would doubt that a BNY Mellon would have, you know, Glassdoor talking about there's a huge turnover rate at BNY Mellon. That most likely is not the case, but it could be the case in a particular environment, in a particular group. And if that's the case, you got to find out why in that group. Why is the audit department, why are the people turning out of the audit department or out of the IT group or even project management? Glassdoor, I guess, would be a place. Or again, if you know, you know, today, you know, we have lists of people in network groups all over the place. And Frank talked about that this morning. Go down the list and see if there's anyone that sits in BNY Mellon or whatever company and reach out for them. We don't use those lists enough, I think too sometimes, Dave, you know, to reach out. You know, the sure. big thing in my group is if you get a list of everybody in that network group, and right now um, it's a little over 2,000, if you reach out to somebody in that group and they don't answer you, you come and talk to me. Because they should be helping you every step of the way. Our members know to do that. And I'm sure Frank's members know to do that. So I gotta believe out of 5,000 people, there's somebody who knows something about that firm. And as a member of the Breakfast Club of New Jersey, you can email the, the group through the Yahoo group. So once you become a member of the Breakfast Club of New Jersey, you can email through the Yahoo group and you're reaching up to those 5,000 people, whoever's still subscribed to the Yahoo group. So it's a great way to ask information from members here who are gonna feel your the importance of your question. Right. Um, so I've got two questions lined up. The first one may need some clarity. Where did it go? It's from Lisa. So Lisa, um, if if we need clarity, uh, you may have to put that in chat. So she asked, how do you deal with the total compensation package, for instance? There's the base plus bonus. The reason why I kind of said maybe we need more information, I don't know what deal with the total compensation meant, but maybe you do, Janelle. If not, Lisa can put something else in chat and we'll move on to the next question. All right. Uh, well, I, I have a um, lately, and I've seen this, uh, you know, being posed. <clears throat> Excuse me. People are saying, talking about their total package um, as a way to elevate or to give them a bigger number in their, you know, in their requirements. Nothing has changed in my search world that when you're looking base plus bonus plus incentives, that you need to break all that out. If you say to someone, "My, I can break my package out for you, base plus bonus plus incentives, this is what I was earning. But don't just give them that one big number because they sometimes may not know that it was a total package. Conversely, when the company says to you, well, the package is around you know, 130. Ask the question, is that base plus bonus or is that just base? And if it's base plus bonus, what is the base? So either way, did I answer that? Yeah, and she did have a follow-up comment. So you seem to really go down the right path. And also realize total compensation is also potentially beyond uh, base and bonus because do they have a matching 401? If they do, that's money in your pocket. Are they, what is their their uh, personal time off policy? How many weeks vacation, extra days? There are a lot of things that go into it. So you really want to look at everything. I think that's, I think you would think so as well, Janelle. Absolutely. Sign on bonuses, everything. 
And don't be afraid to ask for that stuff. You know, sign-on bonuses are big today. Very big. 10,000, 20,000, 30,000. Terrific. Because it's, and it's a one-time so, fee. Yep. And uh, Joe, Joseph has a question. Is it reasonable for a recruiter to make sure that a hiring organization understand that the skills they set they are asking for may not exist in the marketplace for any price or a lower than market price instead of presenting that job description to candidates only for them to not be able to respond at all because the requirements are so unrealistic. So that's a big run on sentence there. I um, read it that, again. Right, but I think I get this guy. Good. Um, who is Who asked the question? Joseph. Joseph, okay. Joe, there are a lot of uh, job descriptions out there that are full of bull because they ask for everything plus the kitchen sink um, with three years worth of experience and nobody has that. Or they'll say, I need, you know, 10 years of this, 10 years of that, 10 years, and the product's only been out for two. So I think I know what you're saying. Your eagle eye, when you're reading these job descriptions, will tell you, your gut will tell you whether or not this is a job you'd like to do, can do, and would like to post for. And forget the way the job description was written, you know, with 10 years, 10 years, 10 years. I, I love the one that comes across that says uh, 20 years of cybersecurity experience. I love that. Love it. Because really, so what I would do is go down the checklist, see if the requirements in terms of what they're looking for, even if you've done it one year, two years, um, in a particular software, hardware, or uh, cyberware, whatever you want to call it. And if you feel that at the end of that job description, you feel good about it, then do then apply to somebody. Apply to a person. If you feel the you've got to apply through the website and you want to do that, then go ahead. But I get what you're saying because the junk that comes out of job descriptions today is horrible. It's horrible. And you have to decipher it. Okay, and actually the prior question about total compensation, Lisa responded, uh, yes, she hit it. So you got exactly right what she asked. Wonderful, good, thank you. Um, and let's see, and Joseph just followed up. A good example is senior management skills and low level coding ability. That get crazy. Right, because what they're looking for there, you know, is somebody who's really stealth, um, you'll probably manage one person or maybe three people, but we need you to have hands-on coding. I mean, really. An intern with three years experience. <laughs> right. Okay. Exactly. It's crazy. So really look at that stuff. And if you have to walk away, walk away. You know, we had a, um, we had a job description in here. It asked me for, a, they asked me for a VP finance all the way down the job description. Now we all know what a VP of finance is. All the way down the job description, it talked about general ledger. Are you kidding me? No VP of finance is gonna work on the general ledger when he's doing strategy and vision for a company and working with the CEO. And by the way, it was a direct report to the CEO. So by the time I got down to the bottom of the job description, I was red like an apple because clearly the company does not know what they're looking for. And you have to decipher what are the key elements in the job. Don't tell me it's general ledger. Don't tell me it's forecasting. Don't tell me it's, you know, putting AP and AR together. Forget it. They don't have a good handle on what they're looking for. And you as a recruiter 
I have to help them massage that description into the right description. Most people don't know what they're looking for, quite honestly. Sure. Uh, Marla has a question. How can you best position yourself to get an interview if your title does not match the job you're applying for, but your skills do? Don't worry about the title. You know, if you are, um, can, can she give me uh, a title and a level? Yeah, Myler, yeah, feel free to add to the question. I'm going to play Jeopardy music. Oh, I love, well, you know what it is? You okay, know, sometimes. So, so she has a title called Specialist. I'm not sure okay. if that's the posted title or her title. Um, former director, though. That's what she wrote. So, Marla, what is the title, your recent title, and what is the title you are applying to? Maybe just make sure I, we know which is which. We need now syncopated clock to play. Oh, it's all right. That's okay. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. Okay. So currently she is a media specialist. All right. Looking to go to a... And want to become or the position you're applying to or you might apply to? Sounds like a director. Could be. Looking for a comms manager slash director. Not sure what a comms oh, is. Right. All right. So communication, communication director. Communication. Oh, I got it. Yep. Communication director. All right. So you're a specialist in that area, which tells me you're an expert. If you're a specialist, then you know everything there is to know about that sort of a job. Well, applying to a director should be no, should be a cakewalk. I'm a specialist in my area. I'm an SME. Um, I'd like to apply to the director, director's position. Every skill set in that description is what I do. Period. You do not have to convince yourself that you are not ready for a director's level. You are. You should. You should not have to convince yourself. You're ready for a director level. If that's something that excites you, if that job description fits you, if you feel that it's the next sweep up from your career path, do it. Don't worry about titles so much. Worry about the level of responsibility. I always say, if you can go one step up, great. Go two, even better. You don't wanna be bumping elbows in the job once you get there you want to be able to flourish in the job and and know that there's uh knowledge that you'll gain uh be able to uh, uh add to the uh to the organization and learn at the same time so go for it oh and she wrote thanks so that's terrific spot on Okay. Good. Okay. There are no other questions. We got through them right now. Um, so right, if you good. have any additional thoughts to let us yeah, know, that's a, fine. And, right. Uh, just a couple of things, uh, a couple yeah. of points. You know, never lie about your salary. You know, if you were making 100, don't tell people that you were making 150 or 200. You know, don't lie about it. That little box on the ATS or the application, you know, write in there what you were earning. Don't be afraid of that. Um, no one's going to check, by the way, what your last salary was because they're not allowed to. Um, you can fixate on money, but try not to. You know, value the whole deal, you know, in a negotiation. Dave just said, you know, 401s, bonuses. I'm a big one for sign-ons. Um, work hours, flex time, growth. You know, when can I get promoted? Talent development is enormous today. And they hire people specifically to
to do what we used to call succession planning, which today is called talent development. So succession planning is what we all remember. You know, talk about that. Talk about perks, you know, within the company. Um, when is your next review? If you're far apart or close to your right salary and it sounds good and all the parts are there, ask them, can you review me within three months? Can you review me within six months? And make sure it's the right company, the right environment, the right everything before you decide to take that job, you know, at, at, at even a $5,000 cut, is this where you wanna be? Make sure all those parts, you know, I would say, um, if you could sit across from the hiring manager, your boss, and have a burger and talk at the same time, not with your mouthful, of course, but, you know, have a conversation, then it's the right place to be because chemistry, is key chemistry is important know your number you've got to put that number in your head um a fellow was going on in the last interview a uh, final interview and the last salary was 120 that he was making in his um uh former position so he came in to see me before his interview and he said janelle um, they're going to ask me how much. I said, all right, so what do you want? He said, what do I want? Yep. He said, well, my last salary, I'd like 120. Oh, is that what you want? He said, well, that's what I was making in my last salary. I said, but is that what you want? Do you really want that number? He said, well, what I really want is 140. He said, that would put me Oh my God, I'd be in Nirvana. Ask for 140. Well, he called me after the interview. He got 145 plus a sign-on bonus of 10. And the reason that happened is because HR asked him, what are your salary requirements? And he said, 140. And they gave him 145 because it was definitive about what he wanted. Let me ask you a question, just like off the job search for a second. What do you want in life, right? How do you win in life? What do you want when you, and every day we want something else. We want, you know, I wanna go to the pet store today and get Maverick a new collar because he's getting so big so fast. I need to get him a new collar. So I need to do that today. And I'm gonna go do it. Hook or by crook. I need to uh, get a haircut. I'm going to get a haircut today because Saturday's the only day I get to do anything now. I need to get a haircut today. So I'm going to get a haircut. I need to, um, I need to make a big dinner tonight. Even though I'm exhausted already, I need to make a big dinner tonight, but I'm, well, I want to do it. I want to get a haircut. I want to go get Maverick a new collar. I want 140,000. I want 200,000. And that's the number. So go do it. Go get the number you want. So there's a question from uh, Valerie. What if you want a raise, however, you don't want a higher or managerial role? Um, well, first you got to find out in order to get a raise, you need to go up in level. And has the company come to you and said, we'd like you to be in management and it comes with a substantial raise. And if you say, no, I don't want to be in management, but I'd like the raise. See what they say. My performance has been wonderful. I've done everything right. I'm very loyal to the firm. Ask the question. Hey, thank you. All right. You know, Good. You've answered all the questions so far. So as I remember you said, right. final thoughts. Yep. 
you know, understand, uh, you know, we talk about questions here in the network group. Understand who you're talking to across the table. You know, everything is all dependent upon who you're looking at, talking with. Um, what does that chemistry feel like? You know, we all step into situations where our gut tells us, you know, to kick up or kick down, you know, depending upon uh, who we're talking to. So HR could be, you know, runs the gamut. Don't annoy the hiring manager with some of the questions. Annoy talent acquisition with the questions. When you're with the hiring manager, a lot depends on how meaningful your questions are, how meaningful you approach, how meaningful you engage that individual. And that also plays into, we really like this person. I think this person would be a good asset for the firm. I think they would work very well in the environment we're in. And thus the salary, you know, would become very consistent with what you're asking for and what you want. Does that help? I think so. She wrote that. Yeah, and, and just don't be afraid to negotiate. No need to be afraid of anyone or anything when you're looking for the right salary. It's your salary. We worked all this time to gain uh, a salary that's consistent with our lifestyle. Why do we need to change that? You know, just because don't let, you know, the myths out there, well, you're not commuting anymore, forget it. Well, we're not going into New York, forget it. Don't let people give you excuses for their salary. You tell them what you want. Tell them that you worked this far in your career and you don't intend to change that. Why should we? You know, companies will come to me and ask me, Dave, um, Janelle, can you redu reduce your fee um, to 18%? And I tell them, it doesn't pay for me to pick up the phone at 18%. You know, my fees are not high. They're 25 and 20%. 20% is for friends and family. 25% is if I don't know you. But don't ask me to go to 18%. It doesn't pay for me to pick up that phone. So you have to have that mindset, what your value is. You know, it's interesting, you are, that, interesting that you commented on, so you want to work from home, you don't want to commute. It implies to some people that they should accept less money. But, you know, the flip side of it, the company doesn't need to have a desk or an office or the infrastructure. So it's a savings for them as well. Exactly. Right on. Right on. You know, that's all crazy. You know, they'll do anything today. Companies will do anything today to say and give an excuse. Don't let them. Why? Why should you? Why do you feel that we, you need to be devalued by an organization when they haven't seen you perform yet? Don't let that happen. And if you need a pump before you go, call me because sometimes that helps. You know, it really does. You know, your confidence is everything. All right, terrific. Well, Janelle, you know, I, I found this uh, as always when I get to see you present. This was wonderful. One of the things that I always find when I uh, in Janelle, she is such a giving person. Uh, at least half of her presentation was really answering your specific questions, and so that becomes sometimes even more important than yes. the presentation part because the presentation part is a great foundation. 
but we always have our own specific scenario questions and Janelle is always so giving in providing the answers to us specifically. So um, this was wonderful. I'm so glad you were able to uh, present again to us. And as Frank mentioned, it was the anniversary of the Breakfast Club of New Jersey, happy 19 years. And Janelle was one of the founding members. So it just seemed very appropriate for you to be here today as well. For thank that you. Reason. Dave, thank you so much. No, in all honesty, I mean, questions all encompass the job search, any questions, whether they're salary related or not, doesn't matter. It's all part of that. Um, I am very, very, uh, always very humbled by the number of people, the questions that come out, uh, the fact that you all got up to listen to this at eight o'clock in the morning, which is unbelievable. And I wanted to be here because I enjoy the people. I enjoy Dave very much. Dave was the first one who taught me what the cloud was like how many years ago. I had no idea what the cloud was. And Dave sat there, I asked him the question and he told me when I was in Princeton, what is the cloud, Dave? And how many years ago was that, my God? Yeah, yeah, but, it was a number of years ago. Janelle presented, a cloud question came up. She had no idea. In, in my mind, I'm thinking you're an IT recruiter and you don't know. So I, in the presentation, I raised my hand and said, we'll have a cup of coffee right after your presentation and we'll talk cloud. So right. my advice to everybody is make friends with a recruiter. Um, because even if they, even if the recruiter cannot find you the job or doesn't have a posting for you that fits you, uh, they're all recruiters, good recruiters are a wealth of information about the marketplace. And as Janelle offered, you know, you can, you can reach out to her. She's oh my also, God, anytime they want. And she's also one of the co-leaders of a group in New Jersey, Northern New Jersey, Hillsdale Career Resource Ministry. Don't be fooled by the name. It's not a, you know. Uh, an organization that's religious based, but it's more of uh, really to help career uh, people career. So they meet monthly on the second Tuesday, second Wednesday evening of the month. Every month. So, so go check that out. And I'm sure it's on Alex Freund's landing expert list. So you can it check is. landingexpert.com to get that connection information. So, um, so I think um, we are going to wrap up the the, the formally wrap up the meeting, letting you know we're going to keep this session open for a while. If we were back at our regular home at the Days Inn, uh, we would be hanging around a little bit and chit chatting. So in just a moment, when we formally end the meeting, um, we will uh, keep the session open. Uh, Janelle, you're welcome to stick around. I know you've got appointments, but it just allows for all of us to catch up with each other, ask specific questions of the group, and nice. uh, do. Do join us if you're able next month at the Breakfast Club of New Jersey. Um, that's going to be our uh, Tuesday. I'm sorry, our November meeting, uh, November uh, 14th. And Bill Chance is our presenter, at least if I remember properly. And um, Bill Chance is a financial planner, but he doesn't talk about wealth management strategies. He talks about budget saving ideas, Affordable Care Act planning and spending for college, things that are really very near and dear to a lot of our hearts, especially when we are in a career transition right now. Um, so you may want to see Bill's presentation next month. So uh, Jerry, am I right? That is Bill next month? Um, that is correct, David. Very good, terrific. Um, and he's confirmed and to be a great presentation. I've got the memory of a sieve, but today at least I've got a coffee <laughs> filter in it, so that's good. That works. So uh, good. Uh, once again, thank you, Janelle. It's always a pleasure to, to be I, in the presence of your, pre your, your program and presentation. Uh, everyone, we're going to keep the meeting open a few minutes. If you need to bow off any time, no worries at all. We hope that you all have a good weekend and a good week and hope to see you all again, at least virtually, very soon. Um, bye, everyone. <laughs>